The suspension is a fundamental element of any car. It's what connects the wheels to the chassis and therefore is the conduit through which all of the inputs and forces from the car are transmitted through to the tyres as they interact with the road or racetrack. On a road car, the suspension is designed to fulfil two key functions, ride and handling. Ride is about how the car absorbs and deals with changes on the surface of the road, how it copes with bumps, potholes, curbs and so on, as well as changes in camber. Most road car suspension systems are designed to absorb these changes as much as possible in order to provide the driver and passengers with a comfortable ride. They do this by absorbing the energy generated by each bump and undulation and try to ensure that grip is spread between all four tyres on the road. You can easily see the suspension doing this job by watching any car drive over an uneven surface. You'll see the wheels and tyres moving up and down far more than the car itself as the suspension absorbs the energy generated by the bumps rather than passing it all onto the chassis which would put a big strain onto the car itself and make for a very bumpy and uncomfortable ride. Meanwhile, handling refers to how the car behaves in response to inputs from the driver. For example, how it responds to braking and acceleration or when the driver turns the steering wheel to take a corner. A Formula 1 car's suspension has to handle those two functions as well, although unlike a road car, driver comfort isn't one of the major considerations in Formula 1. But in addition to those two requirements, the suspension system on a Formula 1 car has a critical third function, which road cars do not. And on a modern Formula 1 car, this is really its primary function. It's about what engineers call providing a stable aerodynamic platform. So what is that and why is it so important? One of the reasons F1 cars are so fast is because they have extremely complex aerodynamics. Every single F1 team spends millions of dollars a year and thousands of hours in the wind tunnel working on maximising their aerodynamic design to generate high levels of downforce. You can think of a Formula 1 car like an upside down aircraft wing, where on an aeroplane the wing lifts the plane into the air at speed. But on a Formula 1 car, the force is applied in the other direction, so the car is forced down onto the track, which means more grip and therefore more speed through the corners. The faster a Formula 1 car goes, the more downforce it generates. And that means at high speed, the car and the suspension have to deal with literally tons of extra load that isn't present when the car is at a standstill or going slowly. But here's the thing. All of that complex and intricate aerodynamic design relies on the car being as stable as possible as it races around the track. However, with the speeds that the cars are moving at, the forces exerted on it want to make it pitch forwards or backwards under braking or acceleration, or roll side to side under cornering forces. It is an inherently unstable environment. Add to that the fact that the faster the car travels, the more downforce it generates, and that downforce is pushing the car downward into the track all of the time. Knowing that, bear in mind that if the car is raised or lowered by even just a few millimetres, the airflow over the car can change dramatically, which will render the aero surfaces less effective. It's therefore the job of the suspension to keep the ride height, the pitch, and the role of the car where the engineers want it in order for the car's aero concept to work properly. And it must be able to do this despite the dramatic changes in downforce as the car slows down and speeds up around the track and the force is acting on it as it brakes, accelerates and corners. And this is what a stable aerodynamic platform is all about. A car that will remain as level and consistent all the way around the lap regardless of the forces exerted on it. So F1 and road car suspensions share some functions, but ultimately they have very different requirements. So how do they differ in terms of hardware? As you might expect, the materials and components found in a Formula 1 car suspension system are somewhat more complex and exotic than in their road car counterparts. Every part of a Formula 1 car is designed to be as safe and strong enough to cope with the enormous forces and demands that come with racing at speeds of over 360 km per hour. Yet at the same time, they need to be as light as possible, which is where things like carbon fibre and advanced alloys come in, which are far too expensive for most production vehicles. 
If you go out to your driveway and look under the wheel arch of your car, you might be able to see the suspension spring, perhaps with a damper housed within it, connecting the wheel assembly to the chassis. At one time, F1 cars used similar coil springs too, but you won't find anything like the one on your road car in the makeup of any modern F1 suspension system, but we'll come back to that in a moment. The suspension on a Formula One car is made up of two main sections, the inboard suspension and the outboard suspension. When we talk about the inboard suspension, we're referring to the springs, the dampers, the rockers, the anti-roll bars, all of which are hidden deep under the bodywork of the car. And when we refer to the outboard suspension, we're talking about the parts that link the car to the wheels, such as the wishbones, the push rods, the pull rods, and the steering arms on the front assembly, which as the name suggests, allow the driver to steer. In addition to this, there's the uprights and the bearings hidden behind the wheels themselves. Each team has their own suspension design, but in very simple terms, they all work in broadly the same way. And it's a bit like this. Each wheel is connected to the car itself via the wishbones and either a push rod or a pull rod, depending on which configuration the team has chosen to use and even which end of the car you're looking at. That rod then connects to a rocker, which in turn is connected to a torsion bar and a damper. A torsion bar is a metal rod that acts as a more compact version of the spring on your road car, and it's what engineers are referring to when they talk about the car's springs. While the dampers on an F1 car are far more complex than anything seen on any road car, most teams have really complex arrays of damping elements, each designed to deal with a different element of the car's movement, and they're true masterpieces of engineering. And at the same time, they're extremely closely guarded secrets. Crucially, all of these elements can be adjusted and tweaked to suit different circuits and even different drivers' tastes and driving styles. Over the course of the practice sessions at each Grand Prix weekend, every team will be adjusting these settings as they try to optimise their car's setup before qualifying and the race. Because of its complexity and the painstaking manufacturing process behind it, the high cost of the materials involved and the length of time it takes to produce the component parts, the suspension system is actually one of the most expensive elements on the entire car. But given all of the critical functions it has to perform and its key role in the ultimate performance of the car, it's also one of the most important.